that big. You should have really brought that in. Yeah. I Lisa's should have. It's sitting in still. the car. But, you know. Um, we're on. Um, we're evening. live. Welcome to the ISO Buddies podcast. I'm Claire. Josh is over there with his disco kitty background. And, um, and doofer. We are talking about handmade isopods. This is the one that lives on my printer until it finds a new home. Made by Claire. I drafted this is the powder myself. And I make them with my vintage sewing machine. Doofer's Paisley. I don't know if he's missing it a set of legs or not, but um so claire is our unsponsored tonight um you will notice i have other swag from the isopod freak i think it's on this boob okay that's from the isopod freak it's a well-fitted shirt i will say it's comfortable it had a tag i had to rip off which i think tag shirts don't need to exist anymore as somebody with sensory issues please stop making them if, if haynes is listening we don't need tags anymore I think they already do some tagless. It's getting better out there. <laughs> they do some, but now they put the tag like in the side of the shirt. And um, yeah, they're like, legally I've... required to put some of that information about washing it and fabric content and the like. Print it on the entire back of the inside of the shirt. I don't care. Like, let's start a thing. All right. Anyway, sure. um, we're already off on tangents. So <laughs> tonight we have a special guest that I, I think is very special. So. This is our my little friend, Nolan. Like I say little because we're just a little bit of friends um, who lives kind of near me physically. Um, and he is into ants in a major way and is going to be an entomologist soon. He's going to go to school for entomology, which is the study of insects, I believe. I think ants are in that. But I think ants are entomologism. I think ants are in a form of carriageism, right? No? Entomology... Entomology. Is the study of insects. I'm not sure whether that contains other arthropods or not. Arthropods are the class that includes insects, arachnids, crustaceans, all of the things we keep as pets. Crustaceans are in there? So he's going to know more about ice pods than it's us. It's an too. arthropod. Crustaceans are an arthropod. Let's bring him so, on. So he doesn't I'm have a not camera. Sure. Maybe he'll correct us. Let's bring him on. All right. He doesn't have a camera. So we're going to bring him on anyway. And uh, Nolan, welcome to the show. Nolan? Hello. There he is. All right. Welcome. Okay, okay so we already have a little debate about what exactly is covered under entomology. Uh, so, okay. So entomology is the study of insects. So all six-legged bugs, pretty much, entomology uh, covers, uh, which includes ants. And then more specifically, myrmecology is the study of ants specifically. Myrmecology. That was it. I knew it. There we go. It <laughs> it's a big part of the website. I met Nolan on formaculture.com. Nolan and Cheeto, who we had on a couple weeks ago. Cheeto and Anthony. Um, sounds like a radio show. <laughs> and you know them personally, right? You've gone places with them, yeah? With uh, Nolan, you've gone with Cheeto and Anthony to certain places. Oh, yeah. To catch ants. <clears throat> We've been all over. Yeah. Together. Because um, they... they uh, Anthony lives in the Midwest, uh, in Southern Wisconsin and okay. Cheeto used to live like 20, 30 minutes from me. So, Oh, wow. So, so Good Cheeto time, ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. He sent yeah. us a funny story. I asked him for a funny story about <laughs> you and keeping ants. So he said, this is the funniest story he could come up with. Probably you're on a Kentucky camping trip. Nolan found a small bat black Myrmacane worker and was convinced it was black imported fire ant. Solanepsis <laughs> Richteri. I said, no way. So Cheeto said, no way. That work is completely alone and non-aggressive. So what are you thinking? So later you identified it and it was Temnothorax pergandi. What? Acorn ants? <laughs> what? Yeah. Any details to go with that story or is it as horrible as it looks? Well, so I remember... <laughs> I remember specifically, so we're in the Kentucky woods and it's just like, it's just pure wilderness. Um, it's, uh, we looked, the place that we are at, it's one of the largest preserves, like east of the Mississippi in the United States. So okay. middle of nowhere, we drove out there. Um, and so we we're, we're just like walking around in the woods, finding ants in this Kentucky preserve. And we find this like black Mermacene worker. And it was like, I want to say it was like roughly three millimeters, maybe 3.5. And I'm like, you know, temnothorax. I, I do not like the genus temnothorax. So I completely ignore them most of the time. <laughs> that's what it so was. I'm like, what? There, there's no way this is temnothorax. This ant is way too big. It's, it's black, you know. 
we're in Kentucky, right near Tennessee, where there's a bunch of Solenopsis Richteri. It's probably Richteri just because of the size and the color. Um, but it That's turned fire out to be the case. All is fire ants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So if you see somebody selling them on eBay, punch that dude in the nuts. Because he's selling <laughs> you fire ants. <laughs> If you'd like me to sell you fire ants, I know where to find some locally. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I told yeah. that story simply for Nolan and I, and if Cheeto <laughs> logged in, because um, I, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny in an ant keeper kind of a way. So mm -hmm. it's very specifically funny. Yeah. Um, but I think we can get into the actual questions that we have for you that are going to be a little more um, targeted to you, sir. But we'll All have right. some fun with them. We're, we're not going to have as much fun as that story. We're no, have it won't be nearly as fun as flying fire ants to, you know, stick out for your porch pirate. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Just put them in a box, just like loose. Mm -hmm. Just oh. in a box, and then whoever steals your Amazon boxes gets a box of fire ants. Congratulations. We need yeah. to call that guy that does the one that shoots glitter. Like, it shoots the glitter yeah, with like the cameras. Like a glitter bomb, but it bites you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I like where this is headed. <laughs> All right. Before so, we go completely <laughs> off the rails, and this show has never been on the rails this episode. Um, so Nolan, who or um, so I've been I've been interested in ants ever since I was a little kid. Like when I was, I used to like uh, ask them outside if I could have like chips to feed the ants and watch them. <laughs> um, and then from there. Roughly when I was like eight or nine, I might have been like 10. I don't remember exactly how old I was, uh, somewhere between like the ages of nine and 11. Um, I, uh, Ants Canada became a thing and I was able to purchase a ant colony on GAN, which is like their local sellers thing, uh, through Alex Wild in Urbana. My, dra my dad drove me down um, and then I got my first colony from him and then the rest is just kind of history, I guess. I kept going with it. Ants Canada is what got me into it too. So uh, at first it was just making fun of his voice. Like his voice just bothered me. <laughs> and now it's like, I can go to sleep to it. It's like a lullaby. I don't know. I had the same thing with Clint and now I love Clint. Clint's reptiles. Now I love his show. I shouldn't smack talk him because I really want him on the show. <laughs> um, he's so knowledgeable and so talented. Uh, but so yeah. is uh, Ants Canada. I can't think mm -hmm. of his real name. Michael. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Mikey. It I, th I thought Michael. it was, yeah, Mike. <laughs> Whatever. I'm I, sure he'll yeah. answer to either, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's, so everybody's been at a young age. Like, you're not that old now, right? You're like 20? Yeah, I'm I'm okay. almost 20. Okay. that's Yeah, this seems to be the, the thing I'm getting. I'm an old man for ant keeping, mm -hmm. but I don't know anything. Oh, so. yeah. 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 Um, now, you got involved in entomology at a pretty early age, it looks like. So Yeah, yeah. How great would it say? Would ugh, how great would you say it is to have your hobby and your passion like coincide with your future career? It's it's really really great. Like, um, you know, I know so many kids that even now, like, they just don't know what they want to do for their career. They're kind of just like, I need something to pay the bills, but I don't really want. I don't really have a passion or anything. Um, so ever, I mean, ever since I've been in middle school, I've known what I've wanted to do for a career, and I'm really really lucky to have that. Um, kind of like drive and direction in my life because I know most people don't. That's awesome. Just know what you want to go yeah. for. Yeah. Now, are you willing to head to the jungle to try to like find Oh, you? yeah, dude. The second I can afford a plane ticket to Brazil, I'm flying to Manaus. I'm popping into the jungle. I'm catching ants. That's my that's my like dream. All right. All right. <laughs> are you going to find some species no one's ever seen before? Oh, like? for sure. For sure. Oh. I'm going to do my best. There's there's definitely funding out there, even if you have to make it your grad school thesis. Yeah. Oh, I'll so come up ready. with some questions you could answer because I've seen some dumb questions get like a million dollars to fund for the study. And it's mm. like, you could have answered that with one joint on the porch <laughs> and two friends. You could have answered that. It's a $30 study, but you got a million dollars. Yeah. I'll have to get a grant like that. Yeah. Yeah. The $30 one. No problem. <laughs> well, watch this space. A couple of years from now, it'll be Dr. Nolan telling us about the species he got today. To yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to come back to the show when you're a doctor. All right. I'm fully, I'm fully convinced that at some point in my life, I'm gonna like die of a jungle disease. Awesome. I'm, just, I'm ready for it. I'm, I've accepted it. 
Um, <laughs> I claim the Netflix movie rights to that story. So right. <laughs> trademark copyright. That's the one for tonight. Okay. Okay. So speaking of careers and adventures and possibly having crazy things happen in the wilderness, when did you first get serious about keeping and studying insects? Um, I would say I first got serious a few years ago. Um, I mean, for a while, it was never like, it was always like, I kind of want to do ants as a career. Um, but I didn't really know what that actually meant. Uh, I just was like, because, you know, there, you can't, you can't get a degree in ants. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of got serious about being like an entomologist, myrmecologist, um, mm -hmm. at the end of my high school career. Cause I, that was the one I like, you know, did the research and figured out what kind of direction I had to take things if I wanted to do that for a career. Um, but I was, I mean, I've been serious, serious for a while. It's just, I didn't really know what that actually entailed. Uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah Cause there's a like lot something. of different angles and you probably still don't even know what it entails by the time you get to yes. level yeah, of I still... <laughs> PhD thesis. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so that brings me into my question. It's pretty good here. So, uh, do you have any other special training or experience that'll help you like pursue working on insects until the day that they start to feed on you in the jungle. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> in the jungle. <laughs> um, I don't really have any special training. Um, I mean, so for a while I was super big into like illegal, illegally trading ants. Um, and I, I've abandoned that now because I got in trouble for it. But um, <clears throat> I used to import a bunch of ants from Asia and I've imported ants for some from Europe. Um, and so it's really, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't recommend it, um, but it's definitely helped me in the it's sense super illegal. That, don't do it. Yes, don't do it. Don't do, do it, that. listeners. But, you didn't hear but, it here. Uh, <laughs> no one wasn't supposed to talk about this mess. Well, so don't you know, do it illegally. If there's currently. a permit, if there's paperwork, if you can get it the right way, do it the right way if yes, you need to do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, haven't done it in years. Um, or it's, just a museum. That, it's just that, um, you know, in the past, it's been able to let me keep a lot, a lot more species and a lot of different species, which has kind of helped me. Um, you know, have a more holistic understanding of ants in general. If that makes sense. So it's worth but, it was worth it for you to get the experience. Yes, but it's definitely. I would not say it's worth it because, I mean, if you get in trouble, it it can it can mess you up. So I would not I would not advise that. Uh, I got it could be a lot of trouble. Yeah, I was a minor, so they they weren't they didn't uh, try and come after me. Okay, but I think that if you were an adult, you would probably probably get in some some uh, deep trouble. All right. Good ad, Good advice. Good. I think most of my listeners are adults, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully they are. Um, but like I said, if you uh, enjoyed that last story, don't don't import ants don't, from another yeah, country. Don't do it. It's I bad don't news. Recommend it. Yeah, I don't. Like they take it really serious. It's not like isopods or uh, I just saw they busted the hell out of somebody for giant snails. Um, there was like 60 pounds of those African giant snails. And uh, those guys are super invasive. So um, they cracked down on that person. This was like two days ago in the news. Um, I don't even know. Whose question are we on? What do we guess? <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. Claire, you're on. Yeah, so like last follow-up on uh, doing illegal stuff. Um, illegal stuff is a lot of times how we get things like invasive species. They're really bad. If you've ever done moss balls for like your shrimp, those are out of the market right now because they've been – infiltrated by zebra mussels, which are ruining a lot of our freshwater waterways. So don't do it. They're studying it okay, now. Get in, touch with, get in touch with Nolan. We'll make sure that links are in the description. We'll put them in the chat at the end. And he can tell you all about applying for college to go study it legally so you can't get the <laughs> Boom. Or we can go to Brazil. Just go to yeah. Brazil. Flights are super You guys can come to right Brazil now. with me. Flights are we'll super cheap together. Right now. He's going to need a research team. Yeah, walking leeches. Somebody to pick off the walking leeches, mm -hmm. right? Is that Brazil? I saw him on Survivor, and I was almost threw up. Oh, dude, I'm sure there's just there's it's everything. It's horrible. the Amazon. There's there's yeah. things. That's definitely there's where it was. Things. Oh, yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah, don't do illegal stuff, or maybe you'll end up dead. And speaking of dead things, do you try and keep any of your DC specimens for taxonomical or display purposes? Um, I had a, I had a teacher, uh, in high school who, uh, <clears throat> was into ants and I used to give him like all of my dead stuff. Uh, so he has like a cool. big collection of like a bunch of species that I imported from, 
different places. And then He's I had, got some really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I don't do any of that myself. Um, okay. I don't Claire know why. Does. I just don't. <laughs> Claire I, does. I helped my college best friend pin her collection for her entomology class my freshman year. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she called me up at 7 in the morning after pulling an all-nighter and was like, the cave cricket's talking to me. you got to come pin this thing. So I know how to pin bugs from that. <laughs> I also know how to make a kill jar because I helped her collect. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it looks so cool when you have, like, a big collection. You know, when you have, like, 100-plus yeah. specimens pinned right next to each other, but uh you know that's just not i don't know i've just never explored that myself with a little tiny card with tiny calligraphy on it like yeah 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 that's cool because you have that's to have cool. the calligraphy or it's not useful to science it has to have specific information that's mm -hmm. probably a class he's gonna have to take in florida like a calligraphy oh yeah class. i probably will i feel yeah, like learning calligraphy in florida, florida. <laughs> that's almost an oxymoron right calligraphy in florida <laughs> i'm confused now oh, um, i'm sure they can write pretty so <laughs> nice. Uh, I can't think of the name of the movie, but I, you got it. Um, what do you think the most rewarding part of ant keeping is and why, Nolan? Um, <clears throat> I think the most rewarding part is finding new stuff uh, and getting to keep new stuff. Um, and I don't just mean like rare stuff, like stuff that other people haven't found, but I think just new stuff in general. Because every time you keep a new species, um, for the most part, they're completely different, and so it's kind of like a whole new experience, and you get to like relive that that first ant keeping uh, moment uh, all over again, which is just incredible when you love ants, right? Um, so that's what I would. I mean, what do you guys do? You guys agree or? I would say with isopods, yeah, definitely. Uh, now we were talking to this is a follow up that we didn't have planned, but um, we were talking with Russ Wilson from. Um, Aquarimax last week and he mentioned something about keeping isopods that once you lock down like the basics mm -hmm. you kind of have a, a huge groundwork to work with other species on so mm -hmm. like there's a couple species of of pods or are they genera I don't know the breakdown of the taxonomy mm -hmm. but yeah I'm not familiar with isopods to be honest so isopods there's like porcellio there's um uh pruinosis there's armadillidium those are the big ones cubaris so See, once you nail down like Cubaris, you've got a species of three genre there. So we're talking okay. both the genus level, and even at that, mm -hmm. Porcelio kind of splits because you've got the larger species of the genus get treated one way, and the smaller ones get treated kind of like just about everything else that we gave. Mm, okay. Yeah. So there's there like the split of, I don't know, the giant Porcelios. Porcelios they like it very dry, whereas to the rest of them kind of like it like half and half or. Mm -hmm two thirds or whatever. So yeah. um, is it kind of like that? Like once you have the basics of ant keeping, you've kind of got the basics yeah. of ant um, keeping. I, I would say it's like that. Like once you have the basics down, you can keep 95% of stuff. And most of the time, I mean, I'm sure you see this with isopods. It's, it's, it's as simple as just providing a gradient um, in your, in your setup, uh, looking okay. at what, what your isopods are liking and then replicate, replicating that in the entire thing for them. Um, that it's pretty much, I mean, I'm sure it sounds like you guys do that with your isopods too. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're crustaceans. If they don't have the right gradient, they die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they dry out super quick. So yeah. um, it's not a, I've heard that with ants too. Like if they, um, um, I would say, I would guess that they're probably more resistant than isopods. Um, I don't actually know, but it, it, again, you know, it depends a ton on the species. I've had ants where it's like, if you forget to water their setup every other day they will die like immediately um okay. or and then there's ants you know they can go months and months and months without water um because they're adapted for the desert so well i heard a story maybe it was from out here it might have been uh it might have been anthony that was on a little while ago so he said that you know when you bring tube test tube setups to catch queens like you want to have them set up with the water because by the time mm -hmm. you get home sometimes they're dead like they're dried out and dead yeah 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 that does so happen. Uh -oh. That made sense to me, like to just have them ready to go. Why would you? Yeah. Mess around with uh, I think test tubes in general are just bad because they're they're such as like plastic or glass or plastic doesn't hold any water yeah. at all. So, okay. and then you have the cotton. So any humidity in there is gonna just dry out and boom, they're dead like that. Oh, so what do you recommend to keep the starting in like? Oh, I just mean a test tube set up without uh like water in it already, like a cotton. Oh yeah 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 definitely. Because we, because we usually, um, 
we usually catch them uh, in in test tube setups that aren't like set up set up yet. They're just empty test tubes because okay. we don't know how how many uh, uh, queens we're going to catch beforehand, uh, and we don't want to waste test tube setups. So yeah, I think true. that's what he was uh, talking about. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking if we got a chance to Nolan is the one I was going to go out with on a journey, but it never worked out. Yeah, um, no, we still will. We but will. I was going to bring a we like will. I don't know fifteen or twenty test tubes like ready to go. Oh yeah. All right. Cool, cool. I'm down. We will. No, we definitely. Will. Um, I think it's Claire's got some cold. questions for you before we get. We've been off the oh, rails this whole inter interview. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here it's been I super cold like at I... night. Yeah, I know it's been awful here. It's like you know we're almost into we're halfway through April and it's still like 55 degrees during the day. I just had yeah, one week of it to like and it might or... snow again where yeah. I live tonight. Yeah. So like, it's not good ant hunting weather right now. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I swear, like uh, especially in Chicago, we get you know six to eight months of winter and then the ants are out for a little bit. The rest of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. meeting up with ant keepers like in Canada, and their story is just similar. Construction season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so bad for the guys yeah. in Canada. They have it even worse. They have it even worse than we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My one friend uh, lives in Alberta, and he's having a hard time. Like they get oh, three yeah. months, I think, out of the year where they can do ants, and the rest yeah. oh, they've got to hibernate them. Yeah. So. Well, we get really lucky because um, Myrmicinae, for the most part, they can you can ignore hibernating them. Um, there's some genera where you have to, but for mm -hmm. the most part, you can you can you can just not hibernate them and they're fine. Um, but a lot of Formicinae species, like you know Campanotis, Formica, um, they will not they will force you to hibernate them. They will not do well. Like they will. I know a lot of Formica will just not lay eggs until you hibernate them. Um, okay. Campanotis have that internal clock, so uh, unless you hibernate them, like they, they, you can keep them at 80 degrees, they don't care. They'll hibernate themselves. They'll be like, screw you. Uh, okay. It's time to hibernate. So, is that good? <laughs> is that fine to just let them do it at 80 degrees? Or is uh, it, I would not you recommend want to get them that, in a fridge. But... <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. So, yeah. um, get to that. Um, so, for a transition, I'm actually going to pull from the comments to get us with our next question. Oh. So. Polies, hey, welcome. Lives like 20 minutes away from where you're going to be, Nolan, and actually oh, yeah. has a job with a partnership with Entomology and Nematology Department, probably at the school you're going to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, so comments say, look him up on Facebook because uh, you got a herping and bug hunting buddy already. Oh, wow. My awesome. question related to things like the department is how can people outside of academia get involved like in the science? Um, we've talked about citizen science a little bit in the past, but whatever <clears throat> you know. <laughs> um, so, I mean, anybody can kind of get involved in, uh, you know, entomology or myrmecology. Um, really, I guess the biggest barrier for people would be, you know, going from, a pro from like a hobbyist to professional level. Um, and I think that you know, you would, it really is just, you know, you got to get your degree and go to school for it. Um, I'm not like completely done. I'm only two years into my eight years for a PhD. So I'm okay. not the best person to answer that question, but. Well, as far as going professional, totally. But I mean, like Josh and I want to go out and do like bug science. Do you know yeah, any you know, programs I'm not, or anything? I, I'm not really sure how, uh, how you would do that. Cause I've tried to like you know, I want to do stuff like that myself. Um, and it seems like you kind of have to just uh, get involved with somebody who's already a professional, if you're not yourself. Okay. And then you can kind of work with them. And, you know, if they're interested in, in uh, doing the same things that you are, uh, they can kind of, you know, uh, take the lead, I guess, mm -hmm. in a way. Um, but I don't think that as, unfortunately, just as like a, a regular uh civilian i guess you could call it like we are uh yeah, yeah, stuff nice. like that but um i don't know i might be wrong i'm not i'm not uh super knowledgeable there on that okay. hopefully Sorry, when you come back as a doctor you'll know some more yeah hopefully yeah so yeah i mean like i did a year of americorps i did environmental education one of our projects we used to go into schools and do citizen science units and our most popular unit by far was the bug hunting unit so we'd go in and we'd teach the kids in the classroom for like an hour about scientific method and whatnot. And then we'd take them out on a field trip to their local park and we had little vacuum aspirators. Mm 
Mm, and we'd right. actually go suck up the bugs and count them up, but then release them. And then we went back and did a follow up with some graphing. And mm, no, the organization no. I did that with had a partnership with our state entomologist. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that's probably. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, but you know, since you kind of have to know a pro to get involved in anything like that, how would you recommend we get involved? Just like meeting people or getting more involved with the hobby um, or like Coley Polies, C-O-L-E-Y, you can look them up and find bug hunting buddies. <laughs> so, okay. So every time I've, I've talked to a myrmecologist, so I've emailed a bunch of different myrmecologists about findings that they've published in papers because mm -hmm. I wanted to ask them about it. Or there were guys that did ant surveys in, in the Chicagoland area and I emailed them. Every time I've talked to them, they, uh, they would reply to me. You know, like they, these dudes are like really, really passionate about this stuff. Um, yeah. Just like I would assume most of us are. Um, so unless there's some like big, big name where they are really, really busy, I would imagine that they would be very happy to talk to you and, and reply back and work with you on this stuff. That's awesome. It, it is very accessible. I feel like a lot of the, the people that are actual scientists are totally accessible. Yeah. I mean, it's such a time. small community too. So you get kind of lucky in that regard. Um, yeah. There's just not, there's not a ton of people doing this stuff. So if you're one of them, it's not like a super gated off community. Right. And they, they've been accepting of uh, newbies. I feel like even in formal culture, they've been really supportive and yeah, those guys really sure. know their stuff. Some of those guys are real aces. Yeah. Um, rather than ask you the question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Speaking of newbies, Josh. Hey, <laughs> I think you can see my queen, can't you? Right. <laughs> Here, no, right here. Hold on, I can't figure out where my finger's going. Right at the end of my finger there. When I take it away. That's mm. my queen. That's my we got some big old majors in there too. Yeah, I'm sure. Um speaking of newbies, yeah, nice segue. I didn't even get that. Uh <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve when dealing with the rookie ant keepers like myself? Um, it's gotta be something you're like, really, man? <clears throat> <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's one specific thing. Um, I'll throw out a few. We're here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. It's 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 kind of. I mean, there's there's some people that will like. Um, I have. I know some people on Discord who like. I swear they constantly ask me the same questions over and over, and they don't. Like they don't remember the answers I've given them. But <laughs> I guess that's more of just like a. Um, like a general pet peeve of mine, not really specific to newbies. I mean, that's a that's a good one. That's that's a pet peeve <laughs> I have in my real life, so I get yeah. it. <laughs> but uh, like, I, I don't think tell you this. I think that as long as you give like a you know a, an honest effort um, to ants, you know, there's nothing. There's no, I have no problem with you. Uh, I mean, you're gonna everybody's gonna kill ants. Uh, I kill ants sometimes, even now. It's just just the way of the game, but. You know, as long as yeah. you're, you're given a, an honest try, you know, I, I've got no issues with you. That was like the first thing on the boards. Their their tip on the boards was like, you're going to kill ants. Get over it now. <laughs> yeah. Before you yep. even go get them, you're going to kill ants. Like they're going to die. So you won't have any explanation. They're just going to die. You'll do everything right. And yeah. yep. it's just how it is. So, Definitely. all right. So no pet peeves. That's You're a way better person than me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Since you don't have pet peeves, and I don't keep ants, but Josh is pretty well a newbie. How's he yeah. doing that setup there? Let, let's talk. Oh, let's talk ants on um, the I would say his setup is, is pretty decent. Um, Way back up. You don't even know the setup. This is just, all right. Let's <laughs> see. That's my camera there. That's my desk. Let's see. Where are we going? It's hard to tell with this thing. So this is more of their setup. It's this crazy tube concoction I came up with. Oh, I see. I found these like habit trail pods online and set those up for isopods. And that really didn't work. Like uh, you're going to kill some isopods in this hobby too. <laughs> and that's how I did it. Um, they're all dried out. Oh, okay. But, um, there are some living in this other, you can't really see right here. This is like their secondary nest. Okay. There's some isopods actually living in there. Um, at first they hunted them. But oh. now they're like, oh, you're not worth the effort. <laughs> like, just roll up and I can't bite you. <laughs> um, but for a beginner, like, ding-dong setup, this isn't bad. They have a lot of place no. to run, I feel no. like, right? 
Yeah, um, the only thing I would probably change is uh, heating them. I'm guessing you just have them at room temp right now. No, they're on a heat. Uh, they've got a heat cord that goes under. It goes oh, right they under do? Here. Okay. okay. Yeah, oh. so they're just on my desk for the show tonight. Oh, so, okay. Normally, and they're in right. a like a right. humidor kind of a zipped up greenhouse situation. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I guess the, you know, maybe the nest might be slightly too big, but I feel like I'm just, I'd just be being nitpicky if I said that. It's, it's, you think fine. it's too big? I, I mean, not, not really. I think you're probably fine. Uh, it's kind okay. of on the border there, like it's borderline, but yeah. I wouldn't, they kind I wouldn't of cram everything it. into one spot. Okay. Yeah. It also looks like they're using it. I mean, if you go back to the close up view, there's a lot of ants in there. So. Yeah. Um, there's probably a good, 80 to 100 in here actually and then yeah. in here there's another like 50 um, as and long then there's as, a couple i'm watching as, um, just run around as long as they're not piling up trash in the nest it doesn't it doesn't matter i think no. they kind of are i think this is their little yeah area. well it's not like sometimes ants will do that regardless um yeah so they might just be uh doing that because that's what they do but yeah, I, it looks to me like they're fine. I, it, you you would tell if they're piling up trash because it would be really bad. Like, um, you know, Camp notice they have cocoons on their pupae and they'll yeah. fill up chambers in the nest that are too large with cocoons casings. Um, okay. So I, I think you're fine. Uh, I think you're doing everything right, I would say. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen a single empty cocoon case that was just laying around. Oh yeah, but, I used um, to, when I, first, when I first started ant keeping, I had a, you know, those like Ants Canada Omni nests that are made of acrylic. Yeah, yeah. I had a big one of those, and I put like a 15 worker Campanotus colony in there. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right. sorry. Right. Uh, That's awesome. They filled up like half the thing with cocoon casings by the time, by the time it was all said and done. So, like this thing, this is my hand next to it, right? So this yeah. thing is pretty small. It's like I don't know, six inches square. Yeah. No. Um, but it, I think they've been in there since they had like 30 workers. Yeah, you're probably. <clears throat> I right. put them in there and then they exploded. They just she uh -huh. just went nuts. Uh -huh. So the brood pile under these guys right now is pretty massive. Do they so, usually? I'm guessing they usually stay somewhat close to the heat, right? Yeah, usually. Now I think they're trying to just kind of get away from the light. I don't usually have the light on them for yeah. so long. Yeah. So usually I have this red film that I put over. Uh, okay. So they're a little more comfortable. They really are more sensitive to the vibrations than yeah. they are to the. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you uh, acclimatize the ants, they will forget about their their hatred of light. That's what I heard. Um, yeah, yeah. If you just leave them out, they'll eventually stop caring. But I wanted to kind of leave them in the dark, so when I'm ready for them to move out, I can make them uncomfortable with the light and yeah. move them out. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's my goal. Yeah, because they're going into a thirty gallon probably by the end of the spring. Mm, okay. So as soon as that's done, they're going to be in a in a pretty solid. They'll have access to a small part of it. And then they'll grow with it. So, mm, okay. Um, hopefully, that's enough for them. That's gonna be. Uh, yeah. That's my goal. Like, are you, gonna, are you gonna have like wood and stuff in there for them to? Yeah, it's a, it's a whole. I just sent you the pictures, didn't I? I, th I think <clears> so. <throat> it was a little while. This ago, is a big know. part of the nest. So. Oh yes, 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 yes. I remember. Yeah, now. yeah. So they won't have access to this right away, but they'll have access to the rest of it right away. Oh wow! So, uh, or awesome. one of the little sections, which is here. Wow. They'll have access to this little section. Mm, okay. So, wow. yeah, it's going to be with awesome. cave paintings and all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, <laughs> they'll have some space. There's even a throne in here. I carved a little throne. Yeah. <laughs> right here. So, anyway, but that was the biggest tangent ever. Right? I hope to God she loves that chamber. That would be so cool. If I found her on that throne, I would die. Um, <laughs> they never, I heard they never go where you want them to go though. No, so. they, they, they will not. Um, yeah, but. the rest of it's going to be just moss. There's really not going to be any, uh, anywhere for them to dig per se. Okay. I mean, they're, they be... shouldn't dig <gasps> anyways. Uh, maybe they will, but I doubt it. Just it's literally going to be moss and like, yeah. uh, a water barrier, like a, a barrier for the water is going to be underneath. And then, mm, yeah, that's yeah. It. No, no, I, no I don't, I don't think they'll dig, um, <clears> especially because they're camping notice, right? So they live in wood anyways, but. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes they say they don't want to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of the guys on the boards were like, "They're going to go where they want to go." Like you're not, yeah. gonna put them, you're not going to make a choice for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to try to make the nest as comfortable as possible. And what I'm going to do is block it off with uh, <clears throat> kind of packed in sawdust. I'm saving mm -hmm. a lot of the sawdust from the project, so I'm going to pack okay. tunnels with the sawdust to keep them kind of sequestered. And then they can dig out when they're ready. 
So okay. that's my goal. Yeah. So we'll see if that works or not, but that might be a little high minded, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. And there's Ching. All right. Yeah. More fans and people with us. So you guys have said Capinotus a few times, and I know that came up with our last interview as well. And that's species? It's carpenter ants, basically. Uh, that there's like, genus. it's the okay. biggest genus in ants. Yeah. So biggest they genus. have like over a thousand species. Um, depending on where you live, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of Campanota species aren't even uh, wood nesting. A lot of them will nest in the soil. Okay. It just happens that in the Eastern United States, uh, most of our Campanotas nest in wood. So All we right. kind of are able to make that assumption. But especially even out by you in Nevada, a lot of your Campanotas yeah. will be soil nesting. So kind of just depends well, on where you're at. Unless they want to live in a sagebrush stick, we really don't have wood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so. until you get started up, up the mountain to hit tree line. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. They kind of um, don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. And that's also a great segue to our next question. So we know that everything's subjective as far as like where we live, what lives in our range, all of that. So what would you consider some good starter ants for someone who's just starting out or maybe is just going out for um, a ant hunt? So I am, uh, I'm, I'm different from most of the community. I believe that, you know, ants like, uh, you know, Solenopsis Invicta, which are the red imported fire ant, um, I believe they're a great starter ant. Uh, out by you in Nevada, you probably have Solenopsis Zyloni, which are, is our native fire ant. <coughs> um, yeah, I, I know where we have some red ones that will yeah. get angry at you if you step on their nest while you're interpreting. Yep. <laughs> um, and then up by us, in the once you get farther north, we have Tetramorum immigrants. I think all of those are great. Um, they're just they're not sensitive ants at all. Um, the the Tetramorum immigrants, you you really can't go wrong with them. Um, they they like you'll they have a decent growth rate. Um, they're just not too picky. Uh, the only thing with the with the Solenopsis is that you got to be mindful of how big your colony is getting because I've had Solenopsis colonies where you know I I've had them hit like ten thousand workers in three or four months. So you oh, just got to be careful in that regard. <laughs> um, but you know as long as as long as you're you're being smart about you know, it, am I feeding my ants too much where they're growing to a ridiculous mm -hmm. extent? They make perfect ants because they're really tolerant. They'll eat anything that you want. They don't care too much about their nest. Um, they're not sensitive about light or stress or, or really anything. It's just, uh, you just gotta be making sure that you're not feeding them too much. <laughs> That's awesome. That goes right to our next one. So I guess pro tips is always the one that we get a little like weird look from our guests. But for someone like me, do you have any pro tips keeping Campanatas? Uh, specifically, Novorensis. <laughs> <laughs> and a side question, uh, do you have any tips for keeping a colony manageable? I know we were just talking about the size. Like, um, so that works for, for all of them. I know the fungus ants, like, if you don't give them as much vegetation, they don't grow as much. Like, they yeah. grow as big as their fungus. Um, <clears throat> so for you, for your Campanatas, I would say uh, I don't really have anything. Uh, just make sure that you're you know, you're doing the stuff that you're already doing for the most part and um, feeding a varied diet, right? For yeah. Campanotus, those sugars are super important because they have that gut bacteria um, that are, are that they're kind of like specialized with symbiotically to get us a bunch of nutrients out of the, the sugar stuff that you feed them and the carbohydrates. So that's uh, super important for them compared to a lot of other ants. But uh, other than that, I think you're, you're, you're probably doing fine. Um, I can't really okay. think of anything. And then, uh, what was it? What was the other part that you wanted that you asked me? Oh, sorry. The second part was like I know that some species you can keep them very manageable. Oh yeah. Uh, by how much you feed them. So specifically the fungus ants. Uh, yeah, the ones that yeah. So fungus, like if you don't yeah. give them as much fungus growing material. Um, so for trachea mermex, because we only have trachea mermex <laughs> in Illinois. Okay. Um, their their max size is probably going to be like 500 workers or you know maybe a thousand if you're being generous. Oh wow! Uh, I don't I don't really think that keeping them <clears throat> manageable is going to be a something that we'd have to think about just because their max size is so small. Um, but yeah, you're you're exactly right. Um, for the for the for the bigger genera, um, just you can kind of uh, stop feeding them as much, and they will they'll they'll self adjust um, just like a lot of ants will. Okay, so cool. stop dropping mm -hmm. yeah, babies off all the time. Yep. Because I'm just worried yeah. about these guys getting too big, but 
No, with those. Big home, so. so with those, like, their campanotas don't grow super fast as it is usually, um, especially the ones we have in Chicago yeah. area. Um, so, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue with, with them specifically. Um, but yeah, if you just if you want them to to kind of chill out, you can just cut down on the feeding a bit, and they will. That's awesome to know because. Um, I feel like I spoiled this colony right now for sure. The other two <laughs> I are still in test tubes. I have two more, but it's like three I workers. My, yeah, yeah. I told you I have my I have my beloved colonies, which I keep in nests, and then everything else gets yeah. into test tubes. Um, <laughs> and then, I, and then uh, I feed my I, I feed my ants like every day uh, when I have them, just because I'm okay. like I'm super super like they must grow as fast as they possibly can. So I keep them really warm, feed them every day. Um, and like, you know, for a while, my ambient room temperature was like 82 degrees. Oh my so that God. my ants, so that my ants could grow super fast. And then I'd have a heating cable for them to keep themselves warmer. Um, I'll sleep outside. I'll sleep in a tent. Let my ants have that room. <laughs> I slept months. on my family's couch for a while. I was like, I can't sleep in here. But I oh. I'm so, I was so like, they have to grow fast. I will do anything. Well, that's cool. At least, what are your yeah. beloved colonies like? I think we're basically at the end of our questions. So, uh, before I before I got rid of all my ants because I'm moving, um, my beloved colonies. I had Aphenogaster lamellidens. I had Campanotus castaneus. Um, I had some Monomorium. Um, I had I'm trying to think about what else. I had I had some Colobopsis queens, but I think they ended up dying. Uh, I had Fidolia dentata. I had why is that name familiar? Is that big head ants? Fidolia dentata. Yeah, those yeah. are. They're uh, they're a species from the south, like the southern tip of Illinois. Um, they, they, I think they go like they might go up north okay. to the St. Louis area, but they don't go farther north than that in Illinois. Um, but they're they're just cool because they're they're one of the larger species in the state. Okay. Um, and my colony had I think my colony had like two or three queens, but. Uh, but yeah, those are those 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 are mine. Like I just oh, cool. you know the colonies that I uh, that are like cool to me that have like a unique trait uh, are what I consider my cool ones. Um, but yeah, those seem pretty like they're pretty varied too. Those names are all very varied, so I assume that their cares all of mm -hmm. them are a little different. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's yeah. a good challenge. Uh, we're going to open up our Q&A, but the first question I had was asked a little while ago by Permian Exotics. So do you have any tips for setting up red harvester ants? Um, it depends on what species he's talking about, because um, red harvester ants is covered, covers like at least 20 species in the United States. <laughs> he's uh, in I'm Texas, so I don't know if that helps you. He's yeah, in Texas. I'm assuming. So I'm going to assume he's talking about Pogonomyrmex occidentalis, which are the one species that's allowed to be shipped around the country without a permit and sold. Okay. okay. Um, if he's talking about those, um, they, so for them, um, I haven't kept them specifically, but I've kept some of their relatives. Um, so just, I, I would keep them really, really warm. Like I, I usually keep my Pogonomyrmex um, at like 90, 95, maybe oh, wow. 100. Um, I'll give them like a, an area that's a little bit cooler, maybe at like 85, um, if they want to chill out, uh, just so that I don't force it on them. But usually they like to be really, really hot. And then, uh, you know, keep the humidity uh, in most of the nest uh, pretty much dry. And then, you know, you can have an area that's uh, humid for them just, just in case they want it. Um, that's that's kind of my always my, oh yeah, Barbados. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> the same rules apply to them. Um, just keep, I would keep them really warm uh, don't don't force it on them. Don't force the heat. If they want to go to a cooler area, they might. Um, so give them that option. But for the most part, th those ants like to be really, really hot. Um, like my I, my Pogonomyrmex californicus, which are they're not the same uh, as Barbados, but they're similar. I used to keep the colony at like 105 or something. Like just keep them. They like to be really, really warm because they they live in the desert and they just cook uh, on the desert floor so that'd be my advice um and then you know obviously variety of seeds uh variety of insects um pogonomyrmex typically don't like to drink uh carbohydrates or sugar water or anything like that but sometimes they will so you can occasionally offer it if you want i don't think you have to but if you want to you can um but other than that yeah there's there's not there's not too much to them i like the whole policy of dropping it in on a little piece of wax paper 
with tweezers. Yeah. Yep. Pull out like, oh, here's a little bit of honey water. Oh, you don't want it? Well, no, no mess. Well, Pokemon they are like suicidal oh. with with water. They they because I, I think they just live in the desert, so they don't know what water is. Um, <laughs> so like they, the tiniest drop, they will they will find a way to drown themselves in it. Sometimes it's oh god, it's, uh, <laughs> that's great. That's, wow, yeah, you just yeah, find them uh, floating. Yep, that's how things go in the desert. It's um, drought or flash flood. Not a whole lot in between. Yeah, no, so. They are. It's crazy. God. Uh, anybody else have any other questions for uh, Nolan? I mean, he is literally the expert. So, I've kind of got a basic one, but it's something that I oh, don't know. Good. So, you guys, I, you both keep ants. I feel like there's a lot that may be taken for granted. So, like, I don't keep ants at all yet. So, talk to me here. Because mm -hmm. um, you're talking about wax paper, you're talking about feeding them this or feeding them in general. What do they actually eat? And maybe what are some things that we would want or need to have around as ant keepers that we would think about when we're first doing our research before we get um, out. So mo the, the vast majority of species are omnivores. So they're gonna eat some kind of protein uh, and then something for sugars like carbohydrates or, you know, for, for most ant keepers, that means sugar water or honey water. Um, but it can be any kind of source of I like do a mix of both. Yeah. I use raw sugar and honey in my water about 50, 50. And uh, it's like a syrup basically. Yep. Um, Let me just. I got this one, Nolan. So then, no. I'm <laughs> oh, so I should take <laughs> no, some leftover syrup from my Ramadan sweets and you know get some ants and give a rose water simple syrup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll totally um, eat that. But yeah, uh, and then and then besides that, they usually need a protein. So for most ants, this will be something like crickets, roaches, fruit flies, um, whatever kind of worms. Yeah, meal oh, worms, whatever kind of bug you have around. Live protein? They want to hunt it down, or um, a few spe like a few, a few of them do, but that's the the smaller minority. The most of them will, most of them prefer to have it uh, dead already. It's just okay. easier. Um, uh, I will say that this Campanotus colony is the dumbest, funnest thing to watch hunt because they're so <laughs> stupid. So that let prey walk right by them. I gave them a uh, pinhead crickets live the other day mm -hmm. and they'd grab it and it would jump away. And then they'd be like, what? It was just here. What just happened? Where did it yeah. go? And then another one would find it. It was, I was beside myself. I was laughing so hard. I'm like, how are you so stupid? <laughs> I see them on like discovery channel and they're just like swarming something. They're killing spiders. These guys are not doing that. My Campanatus are not doing that. They're no, like, no, no. Campanotes are really? not. They're not the yeah. species you want to see them kill stuff. They're just not. You no. gotta go to Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta go and see those. Forget the color of Brazil. Brazil uh, or Africa or somewhere, you know. Yeah. Cool. Um. We uh, and then there's uh, the harvester ants too. Are like they they feed mostly on seeds. Some of them are uh, like the trichomyrmics he was talking about. Are uh, they're leaf cutter ants? So they collect leaves to feed to fungus. So yeah. they eat the fungus ball, but they propagate this ball of fungus. Yeah, it's kind of like a, you know how you <clears throat> grow cro crops, right? So yeah. they they collect plant matter to feed the fungus, and then they eat the fungus. And um, those are those are really easy because you can just feed them leaves or like oats, um, as oh, opposed cool. to like everything else. But cool. I didn't know oats was on the list. I saw uh, Cheeto's guide to trichomyrmics, and he yeah, it it uh, it depends. Over. It depends. So like Acromyrmex and Ada. Um, which are the two other genera of higher attains we have in the U.S. Um, they they don't seem to like oats that much. Um, like they might eat them occasionally, but they're not fans. But the tricky mermex we have, like the, the which is what we have in Illinois, they will like they can live off of a di of a diet of like an, almost entirely oats for months and months and months. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so I have that. I have that from my spots. They love it. Yeah. Um, did you see this question I put on the board? Oh, okay. So, um, I, would not, about, yeah. I would not use the gel ant farms. Um, I mean, okay, so it depends on what you're talking about. So if you want to use them for, uh, you purchased the little ants that they have uh, in the, in the, like when you buy a gel ant farm, they give you a slip to purchase the ants and they'll ship them to you, just the workers. If you want to use them for that, that will work. Um, but long-term, um, the gel ant farms, they don't have uh, what, what like a colony actually needs. 
So beyond just having uh, a few workers on a gel ant farm that are going to dig around for like a month or so, um, they're kind of, you can't really use them uh, for anything just because they don't have what a colony really needs. Yeah. Can you use them um, if you just filled it with sand instead of the... Uh... Yeah, or dirt or... Yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of like whatever, whatever, mixed. whatever uh, floats your boat, you can fill it with, and then the ants will dig. So basically, and the then, gel is what's crap. It's not necessarily the. Yeah, it's not even necessarily the, the ant farm. I guess you're right. Um, and I know they're not great. Like they're, I've heard a lot of things about easy escapes and uh, keeping humidity in them and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, so, I mean they're they're really they're made um, for you know thirty workers to go crazy dig as fast as they can so you can watch them and then yeah. kind of die <laughs> that's that's what they're made for <laughs> so uh if you want to keep a colony they're not they're not good for that okay cool cool I, I was hoping somebody would ask that because that's um that's a really common question because they're easy to get and they're easy to find and they're cheap yeah um, so like this thing that i have this crazy contraption i have mine in like i kind of modified it for them mm -hmm. um but and I did tubed it out like it doesn't really have the tubes, so uh, that was my deal. But oh, what's this? Cool. Um, yeah. Did we have any other questions? Nobody else? Ant questions? We gotta have some ant people here. Any entomology question? Let's open it up. If it's got six legs and you want to know about it, yeah. Let's, uh, Let's see if our budding entomologist knows an answer yet or if he'll have to get back to us after further research. <laughs> I'll give you some uh, career advice. Get into <laughs> roly polies because those two guys are about to die and then there won't be any roly poly experts alive. Oh, so, there's really, there's only two like big. There's like two guys left. And... Wow. As far as the taxonomists go, for sure. Yeah. And it might be other researchers as well. Yeah. Wow. They're about, they made Ruth and Peter Ginsburg look yeah. young. So, wow. Yeah, They're like the old. guy who literally wrote the book on isopods is not a high-level PhD isopod specialist. Oh, he's still wow. awesome. We still love him. We'd still love to have him on the show, but Oren, respect. Um, um, yeah, he literally wrote the books. Real. So. so the guy that asked in the chat um, that he's waiting on nuptials. Uh, where in yeah. the U.S. do you live? Because do you he live in the is, U.S.? Or? Where's Grady? Because He's if you do, I can tell you, I can tell you uh, Southern, what's going Southwest on. Southwest Missouri, kind of Ozarky. Oh yeah, Southwest Missouri. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So you 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 should have you've already had your first nuptial flights. Um, you've definitely had Prinolepis and Paris fly, which fly like the first day it gets warm, so like seventy ish, maybe sixty. Uh, the first day it starts hitting those temperatures, they'll fly. Um, you're probably having Campanotis fly. Um, they'll fly at at night so like uh on a decent on a decently warm night you can go outside and you might be able to see campanotis queens running about um go get them grady go get them. <laughs> but yeah you you if you haven't like you'll definitely uh have some stuff flying uh either right now or very very soon uh, i would just keep an eye out nighttime you said yeah nighttime yeah um You'll have stuff fly during dawn, like at dawn, quite a bit. Out the um, door now. <laughs> well, he's not even listening now. Yeah. He's out there with a the net. Turn off the porch light, and then they should be all swarming about the light I'm by not, the time we set off. It's going to depend on the night. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to be a good night tonight, but it's definitely coming up for you because you're in Missouri. Yeah. You're you're a bit south of me, and we're going to have Campanotis flights up here soon. He's found some good side colonies in his uh, ones in his wood pile out back. So. And he's yeah, got, I'm sure he's, got a fairly he's probably already property. had Campanotis flights, I would okay. guess. Cool, cool. Uh, or they're flying right now, just right depending on the weather. It might not be a good night tonight. Um, you just kind of got to watch the weather. Isn't it like after a rain or whatever? Like that's when they're out? Um, it depends. So for Campanotis, not <laughs> yeah, so much. Yeah, makes a good night. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends. Um, Campanotis, they don't care a ton about rain. Uh, rain recently is not a bad thing. Uh, usually that encourages them but really what's going to matter is that that 70 degrees um if it's 70 degrees or higher at dusk okay uh it'll usually there's a there's a good chance it'll be a night where you can catch queens um 
but it, you know, it is kind of like fishing. Uh, sometimes the weather conditions will line up and you are going to catch absolutely nothing. Uh, it's just a, it's just a game of luck. Uh, you can do things to increase your luck, but it's never a hundred percent. Right. Right. So you could go out and find nothing. Yeah. It, so, you, like, there have been times where I'm like, it's the perfect night, absolutely perfect weather. It's midsummer, and I, there's nothing flying just because I don't know why. Cause you're out looking. Yeah. So enjoy the experience because that is the nature of bug hunting. Sometimes you catch everything. Sometimes you catch a box elder bug. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a bug I hate on this earth. It's a box elder bug. Oh, and everyone knows about them. They must be nationwide, right? I don't know about box elder bugs. How do you keep those out of your house, Nolan? What are box elder bugs? I've never What's heard of those. They're, they're, they're black with those red stripes oh, on them. I know, I they know, smell. They're yeah. black and orange true bugs, so they're the same family uh, as like a stink bug. Oh, I see. They have yeah. this like, uh, I don't know what to call it. Like, if medicine could spoil, that's what they smell like. <laughs> like, if your cough medicine spoiled, like, that's uh, exactly what they smell like to me. Wow. Am I breaking up for you guys? Because it's getting me a weird. You're, you're okay right now. Um, so, oh, yeah. pulling from the comments, I don't see a question, but I see a statement, death fading beetles. Nolan, do you know anything? I know nothing about those. No. Okay. I'm, do you know anything about death uh, fading beetles? Uh, I, I kind of only focus on ants. Like, okay. uh, there's a little bit a little bit that I dabble in <laughs> that is not ants, but for the most part, I'm very, very ants. Ants are where it's at, then. Uh, yeah. Death fading beetles. There, I want to say the blue ones are native to like Mojave Desert region, so like northern Arizona, southern Nevada. You can find them out there. Um, but hold on to those thoughts because I know we're having Pete from Bugs in Cyberspace on sometime over the summer, and that might be something that comes up with him, or you can bring your questions back then because I know he keeps yeah. them. Pete's the jam. If you go to Bugs in Cyberspace, uh, I think he has a video that just plays in the background of his like desert beetle collection like there's a ton of different species in there it's really cool well i say a ton is like four different species oh, we have the question um i've heard that ants like toasted what toasted nuts have you found it's that true small like um i feel like some ants do smell like that but i would not well, say smell the majority like of them What's the one you were gonna give me? What's that smell like? That stink ant or whatever? What do they call it? The skunk yeah, ant. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> He's like, I got a colony for you, and I looked him up, and I was like, you're a bastard. It's just that's on the <laughs> internet. Like, they smell like rotten kind coconut, of, which I've never smelled. I didn't know coconut they, rot. They kind of vaguely smell like citrus. Somebody said in like, blue a, in like a bad way. It's not. Somebody I don't know how to describe cheese, it. And I was like, how's that better? Yeah, I'm gonna spread I, ants on my burger. What? Well, you know, I, I've never, I, I don't think I know what blue cheese cultures. smell like. <laughs> Man, you got to get out in the world. What is going on? You live in Chicago. You never Dude, had a burger I, with blue cheese. Literally every day, all I think about is ants. It's like a disease. Well, <laughs> you take me out hunting for ants, and I'll take you out for lunch. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do this. I know how to eat. I was a chef before I was into isopods. Oh wow. So. Yeah, so so go out. on an adventure with Josh, and he'll make sure you get some blue cheese, and you can see how much it smells like ants on the way out. We'll get you fed. I don't know what a rotten coconut smells like, though. I've never had the pleasure of that smell. Oh, I, not nice. I I had um, I've I know what that smells like. I think. Yeah, I've been to I've been to Florida some because you know, got to go after the ants in Florida. Yeah. So, yeah. But. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've I've traveled in the tropics. I lived in Thailand for a year. There are definitely smells. Oh man, I'm so jealous of you. Coconut in. I'm so jealous. Thailand <laughs> is know. awesome. Thailand's awesome. I went as an English teacher. Um, oh, but okay. I did. One of the guys that lived in the same hotel apartments as me was studying. What was he? He might have been like. A, edited one of his papers i don't remember he was doing something with bacteria but he was doing grad school over there mm, okay yeah no thailand thailand is really 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 cool um for everything for fish did you ever see those uh i don't i don't know uh they're kind of did you ever see like big big trails of ants uh i, I probably i was in bangkok so no not really but right after i moved in i did get a weird bite on my arm that when i went to see the doctor they were like 
have you been way out in like the jungles of the rainforests? Because whatever <laughs> bit you, and we know what bit you, and it might have been some kind of ant, I really don't remember, was not supposed to be in downtown Bangkok, but um, that's oh, the story. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I used to go out to the islands yeah. on occasion, but it was like going fishing or something. It wasn't like. Oh, ant. okay. I'm surprised. They have this ant in, in uh, Thailand called Care Bear Diversa. Uh, and they're they're really cool because they have one of the the largest um, variations in size uh, between different members of the colony. So you'll have, uh, you know, a two centimeter queen, uh, two millimeter workers, and then you can have majors that are like almost the same size as the queen. Wow, um, that's really and, cool. So they're they're really to see them in the wild is awesome because they make these really big trails um, and everything. So I was just wondering if you'd seen this. No, I've spent most of my time in the city, so even if we had them, it probably would not have been in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ching, durian, that's probably what the ants smell like. Because <laughs> if you get a nice durian, it smells like rotting strawberries and onions, but in a nice way. And then you eat it and you realize that the white palate is, does not exist for durian. We are not good enough for that fruit. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had durian. I need to try it. I've, I've been Thailand. wanting to try it. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. other crazy ant story where I did end up out kind of in the jungle was I was traveling in Sri Lanka and we went on a hike out to this waterfall. And mm, our guide wow. made us put um, tiger bulb around our ankles to keep the ants away. <laughs> wow. And whatever else might have been crawling around and would have wanted to bite us. Wow. <laughs> Wow, you've been all over. You've been to like the cool. Th those are you've been to tons of places that I like dream about going. Yeah, I can't well, use my we'll, camera either. We'll talk Sorry. travel sometime. It's, <laughs> I decided I wanted to travel. I made it happen in my twenties. Um, you'll have even uh, better opportunities as a career entomologist, I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Sri Lanka is so cool. It was but, great for a vacation. I have no idea about long term. So you know, if you ever get a post there for a project, <laughs> take yeah, advantage. <laughs> It's just uh, India is really cool because they they they've been isolated uh, for so mm -hmm. long. The Indian subcontinent, so they have a bunch of, of yeah. weird weird ants. Because um, they only they only recently joined back up with the with the main Asian continental plate. So mm -hmm. for a while they had a bunch of uh, exclusive species, and and uh, now that they've rejoined, they still have quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the same as it was, but you know. Yeah. Well, and then we'll you get there. like Sri Lanka or the Maldives where they're actually islands, so they do still have some of that weird stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. But. Josh, what are you doing? We lost your video. Yeah, I don't know. My camera's not working, so I logged out of the whole thing to come back in, and it's still not working. I don't know. So I'll have to look okay, at it next what episode. What are you doing? Because we hear you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> so, I was seeing if it came unplugged because of a cat or something. Um, uh, they like to ruin my day. So why not have cats? They ruin everything. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where we're at. If nobody else has any questions. I think that's where we're at. So Ching, a, doesn't it taste like heaven and smells like hell is what they say. And they will not let you take it on public transit in parts of Southeast Asia about the durian fruit. So wow. it looks like a fetus, doesn't it? I've heard it looks like the fruit looks like a weird fetus. It's like a weird yellow color. Ugh. It's Ugh. kind of spiky on the outside. I them for sale at Jewel once. Yeah, yeah. Can or like the whole fruit. Otherwise, you would the sell them before they had you a got whole the store. Durian. Uh, and I was like, man, I, I kind of want to buy this, but I don't really have any. I don't like. I can't take this and and <laughs> cut it up in my house because it's a big fruit. <laughs> like it's a it's a huge fruit. Yeah. I was trying to make a size comparison, like with my hands, and you guys can't see me, so I'm getting <laughs> mad. They get pretty good size. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure Chiggle would be a comment if I'm wrong, but they get pretty good size. I think you, they you do. You want to get it already cut up because if you if you don't, if you haven't acquired the local palate to the places where they eat it, you probably will only handle a bite or two. It, it's very much a little bit goes a long way if you're not used to it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Enjoy um, it on your Asian travels. Asian people have like durian ice cream, and then you can try it in a way where it's at least cut with the coconut. <laughs> See, I thought it, I thought I've always heard it was like super, super sweet and super delicious. Is that, is it not that simple, or? 
It, it depends on the subspecies. Like I said, some of them you get a whiff and it's a little bit rotting strawberries. It smells kind of fruity. And mm, some okay. of them it just smells like feet and rotten onions. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> That sounds so less than delicious. One, you're probably going to feed a lot of it to the ants. Just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's very much an acquired taste, but it's like one of the kings of fruits for a reason too. That was my yeah. experience. With it. Yeah, I definitely want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely worth trying. Whatever you do, get to travel for your work. Be an adventurous eater within risks or within yeah. limits, because you don't want to take too many risks. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, don't eat that. The egg with the... It's already like a chick. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, I know what you're Oh, Balut in Philippines. Uh, uh, yeah. You go to Philippines, I'll hook you up with my friend. She eats that. She'll hook you up with one. Uh, oh, uh, Ching no. says it's ripeness. Ripeness is the deal with durian. With durian. I don't I don't rock with the with the Balut. That's... <laughs> it's not that I, I'm disgusted by it. I just don't think it would taste good or feel good to chew in your mouth. It's a texture thing for me, for sure. And, and it has a face. My friend who eats it, granted, she's Filipino. She's from there. Uh, she actually quite likes the texture. But I haven't. I knew her when I was in Thailand. We were both kind of living in Bangkok at the same time. So I haven't mm -hmm. been there to visit her to try it myself yet. Mm, okay. I wonder. It's probably an acquired taste, I would guess. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it would. So, <laughs> some of the stuff we eat is, I'm sure, an acquired taste for a lot of other people, too. Ab yeah, 100%. Yeah. But, like blue cheese. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I don't even like coffee. I, I think coffee is coffee is definitely an acquired taste, in my opinion. Well, acquire it before you go overseas, because you can get some really cool coffee. Oh. Or, or move to a coffee producing country, and the way to acquire the taste will be a stop for it. Mm, okay. And the coffee producing countries also tend to be kind of tropical and have cool ants. So yes, 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 they do. <laughs> See, you find the coffee ants, you'll be the first one. <laughs> Even though so you can take them. up with big coffee and figure out if there's some kind of symbiosis where if the right kinds of ants live in the land, it's going to be good for the plantation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those guys will take coffee right out of uh, cat poo. So, yeah, they got to love it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, that's going right there. All right, Nolan. Well, thanks for coming. Um, we won't keep you anymore. It's been awesome. Alrighty, thanks. We for had our tangents. Me. Thanks for rolling with the tangents. No, yeah, it's it's a blast talking about stuff. So anytime. We oh, good. Ants. Well, <laughs> if we're hurting for ant content, we'll contact you. We'll get you back in. Alrighty. But we're gonna close it out. So I'm gonna put you back to the green room. Feel free to stick around or not. Um, we do a chat in Facebook after this, like a live chat thing where we just kind of goof around and talk about whatever, like follow up stuff. So, mm, okay. um, but that's up to you. All right. All righty. Adios. All right, man. Thanks for coming. Adios. Bye. Uh, I just got rid of Claire. There we go. <laughs> I just got rid of Claire. I can't see what I'm doing. Um, well, yeah, well, we'll have to have Nolan back and check in throughout the degree and see what else he's learning about and how much more cool ant info we can get out of him. We definitely will. I feel like he's going to be yeah. a long-term friend. So I have too many long-term friends that are like half my age or less. <laughs> I think that speaks to my maturity. Um, so if you like what we're doing and you had a good time with this tonight, like and subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get updates when we cast a new stream. Uh, Which is basically every week, 6.30 Pacific Tuesday, or we will let you know on the rare occasion that it will be on a different day. We will have one coming up, but we'll let you know in advance. We'll have one coming up uh, on site. It's going to be an on site interview. So, at a privately run zoo, basically. So, <laughs> that'll be a so good one. So, keep your eyes out, like, comment, subscribe. And if you hit the bell and you're subscribed, you'll definitely get that content either live or next day. And we don't mind when you watch it. And if you comment, yeah. we keep track of those. If you're not here in the chat, we still want to know what you think and what you've got to say. 100%. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great night.